Is the Satachi Slim X1 Bluetooth backlit keyboard a good magic keyboard alternative? Check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. A couple of months ago, I unboxed the Satachi Slim X1 Bluetooth backlit keyboard from Mac and iPad, but I never got around to actually reviewing it until now. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, as you're going to see, the Slim X1 Bluetooth backlit keyboard has a lot going for it. First and foremost, it's built out of anodized space gray aluminum with the black keycap, so it looks really sleek. And it also comes with these rubber feet that you can attach to the back of the keyboard to make it rise at an angle for a better or more comfortable typing position. That's a little bit on the low budget side. It would have been nice if those were integrated into the keyboard itself, but nonetheless, it actually does make typing very comfortable. Now you also have a little power switch, very similar to the Magic Keyboard. And here's the big difference. You have USB type C instead of a lightning connection, and it comes with a USB type C cable to plug in and to use it in wired mode and to charge the device as well. There's a couple of LED indicators. You have your function lock and your power indicator. And Satachi does something a little bit different. You have a search function key along with a, like a sort of a command tab function key as well. And remember this keyboard is intended for use with the iPad as well, along with the Mac. So it kind of makes sense in that regard. So it goes without saying that the Magic Keyboard from Apple is the most obvious comparison to the Slim X1. They're more or less the same size. They're both wireless. They're both made out of aluminum. They both have the scissor switches. They're very similar. But when comparing these two keyboards, there's also quite a bit that's different. First of all, you'll notice those function keys at the top. Uh, the function keys are smaller on the Slim X1, as you can see here. But the benefit of this decision is that the regular keys are a little bit larger on the Slim X1, which gives you a little bit more surface area to press those keys. The Slim X1 is slightly wider, has slightly wider bezels on the sides. The thickness is more or less the same when you account for the plastic back cover on the Magic Keyboard. Very subtle differences dimension wise. The stick on risers on the bottom of the Satachi do make a difference when it comes to typing angle, but there's nothing stopping you from doing something similar with the Magic Keyboard. So you can see the uh, Lightning versus the USB Type-C. I think that's a one up for the Satachi. I prefer having USB-C there. Disappointingly for the Satachi, I, I wish it had the inverted T keys for the arrows, but they are exactly the same as the Magic Keyboard. And that brings us to the most important part of this review. How does it feel to type on the Slim X1? With the Magic Keyboard being the touchstone, I love typing on the Magic Keyboard. I think it has good response on the keys. Don't have a lot of key travel, obviously, uh, but I think it's a pretty comfortable keyboard to type on. And I like how the keys give you some nice pushback on the fingertips when you press. And although the Slim X1 has a somewhat similar feel, it is different. Uh, pressing the keys on the Slim X1 feels a bit mushier. The response doesn't feel as, as precise or sharp as, as the Magic Keyboard. That's the best way I can describe it. It doesn't feel bad, but the response is a little bit softer and a little less precise feeling, if that makes sense. And the Slim X1 features just a hair more key travel than the, the Magic Keyboard, which also contributes to the difference in, in key feel when typing on the Slim X1. Now, I hope that didn't sound overly negative for the Slim X1. I just personally prefer typing on the Magic Keyboard, but I feel like this is a very subjective thing, and who knows, you may actually prefer the Slim X1. One of the biggest downsides of the Magic Keyboard is its lack of backlighting. Well, the Satachi Slim X1 provides a backlight with 10 different brightness levels. And this is really cool because you get the benefits of a wireless Bluetooth keyboard, but also the benefits of backlighting built right in. So you can use the F5 and F6 function keys to adjust the backlight up and down. So like I said, there's 10 different levels of backlighting. And obviously the higher you go, the brighter you go, and the more battery you consume. So with that in mind, after one minute of inactivity, the backlight will automatically decrease down to level one, which is gonna save a lot of battery life. And then after about three minutes of inactivity, the backlight will turn off completely until you press a key again. 
After 30 minutes of inactivity, the keyboard enters into sleep mode, which requires you to press a key to wake the keyboard up. Now, if the battery gets down to below 15%, the backlight will turn off completely in order to save battery. So it's a really smart system that, that Satachi has employed here, giving you a standby time of about two weeks with about 45 hours of usage. Now I've used this keyboard for three weeks straight, only had to charge it once during that time, and I'm a pretty heavy user. One thing I don't like about the backlight, and this is just the inherent design of it, is how the, the backlighting sort of bleeds through. I feel like if Apple designed a magic keyboard with a backlight, it would be a little bit more elegant of an implementation. Now the next biggest feature for the Slim X1 is its multi-device support. It supports up to three different connections, three separate Bluetooth connections on one device. So if I hold function, and press and hold one of the three Bluetooth keys, one, two, and three. You see I have three in pairing mode right now, so I can go ahead and pair Bluetooth connection three with my iPad, for instance. And then I can do the same thing with Bluetooth connection two. I can pair that with, I don't know, my MacBook Pro. And then I can pair Bluetooth connection one with my Mac mini. And then you can seamlessly switch between all three of those devices simply by holding the function key and pressing key one, two, or three just like this. All right, so I'm connected to my Mac mini there in the background, command space. You can see I'm controlling the Mac mini. Now on function two, connect to my MacBook Pro, command space to prove I'm connected. Let's do it again. Function three to connect to my iPad Air, command space, just like that. It's a very underrated, super handy feature, being able to quickly switch between three devices on the fly from a single keyboard. So ladies and gentlemen, the Slim X1 from Satachi, it really does check off a lot of boxes. It has really good design, that all aluminum build with the uh, black keycaps, the anodized aluminum space gray color. You have USB-C connectivity for recharging, and you can also use the keyboard in USB-C wired mode. To do that, all you do is connect the cable to your Mac and then hold the function key and press the USB key in the upper right hand corner. Uh, so that allows you to toggle the Bluetooth connection off and connect directly via that wired USB-C connection. Just like this, let's go ahead and do it now. There you go. Super simple, super easy. You also have that function key lock, which is nice if you wanna just use the F keys on your keyboard, you can do that as well. And like I said earlier, I prefer the way that the Magic Keyboard feels when I type on it, but I don't think the Slim X1 is a bad experience by any means. And some of you may prefer the feel of the keys on the Slim X1. But feature wise, I don't think it's arguable that the Slim X1 is an upgrade over the Magic Keyboard because you can connect to multiple devices from a single keyboard and it has backlit keys, not to mention USB-C connectivity. And all of that for $29 less than the Magic Keyboard from Apple. So what do you guys think? If you appreciated this video, leave me a thumbs up and let me know what you think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.